Hi, my name's Marianne Schultz. I'm one of the instructors in the writing lab for COM 101. Today, we're going to talk about social media and how it affects those who work in fields relative to communications. Ian Hamilton, who was a former technology reporter with the Orange County Register, who is also a Cal State Fullerton communications alum, said, all media is social media. With that in mind, relative to journalism, to be successful in using social media, a reporter must be a person first and a journalist second. With social media, the audience follows the writer, not what the writer is reporting about. And because journalists are objective observers, they should be members of the social media. You've heard the terms social media, social networks, social networking, etc. And probably most recently, it's referred to as just social. The names change and so does the technology. Some come and some go. I bet many of you had a MySpace account at some point in your younger life. But what's the real definition? Obar and Wildman in 2015 defined social media as what you see here on the screen. Or social media are computer mediated technologies that facilitate the creation and sharing of information, ideas, career interests, and other forms of expression via virtual communities and networks. I think they wrapped that up pretty well in what about 20 words. What they're trying to say, and others have also said, is because there are so many social channels today, the general term for social media is difficult to define, but there are some common features. Social media includes web-based and mobile technologies used to turn communication into interactive dialogue between organizations, communities, as well as individuals. Web 2.0 refers to ability to interact with the website. Instead of passively having information and entertainment pushed at us, we participate in the experience. Social media is ubiquitously accessible, meaning it can be found almost anywhere and is available 24-7. What would we do without our Wi-Fi? User-generated content, such as posts or comments, which are text-based, digital photos or videos, and data generated through all online interactions are the lifeblood of social media. Users create service-specific profiles for the website or app that are designed and maintained by the social media organization. Social media facilitate the development of online social networks by connecting a user's profile with those of other individuals or groups. There's all kinds of social media, and I categorized them the best I could, but as you can tell from looking at these, many of these fit in multiple different categories. Keep in mind, while there are six different types of social media, there can be an overlap among the various services, and new technologies emerge frequently. For instance, Facebook has microblogging features with their status updates, and Flickr and YouTube have comment systems similar to that of a blogging system. Social networks allow you to connect with other people of similar interests and background. Usually, they consist of a profile, various ways to interact with other users, ability to set up groups, etc. The most popular today are Facebook and YouTube. Bookmarking sites are services that allow you to save, organize, and manage links to various websites and resources around the internet. Most allow you to, quote, tag, unquote, your links to make them easy to search and share. The most popular are Delicious and Stumble Upon. You don't hear about these often, but if you like to bookmark things you find on the, online, whether it's on a website or in social, social news services allow people to post various news items or links to outside articles and then it allows the users to vote on these items. The voting is the core social aspect as the items that get the most votes are displayed the most prominently. The community decides which news items get seen by the most people. The most popular of these are Dig and Reddit. Media sharing services allow you to upload and share various media, such as pictures and videos. Most services have additional social features, such as profiles, commenting, etc. And the most popular of these are YouTube, Flickr, and Vimeo. Microblogging is a combination of blogging, 
Microblogging is a combination of blogging and instant messaging and allows its users to create short messages that can be posted and shared with an online audience. Social platforms like Twitter have become extremely popular forms of this type of blogging, especially on the mobile web, because these short messages can come in the form of a variety of content formats, including text, images, video, audio, as well as hyperlinks. One of the older ones is commenting on blogs and forums. Online forums allow members to hold conversations by posting messages. Blog comments are similar except they're attached to a blog and usually the discussion centers around the topic of the blog post. There are many popular blogs and forums. Now let's look at what's most popular. Now you'll see the term at the top social networking sites. You're going to find that the, the terms are synonymous for social media, social networking, etc. So as of February 2017, and looking at the number of visitors, you can see that Facebook and YouTube are the top two, followed by Instagram and Twitter. Vine's gone away, but it was quickly replaced by additional services offered by existing tools. It's also referred to as social, and other terms are added when you use them with marketing. You guessed it, social marketing. Social media's popularity is tremendous, and it grows every day. Facebook has more than 845 million members, and I bet you're a member because it's the most popular amongst a very broad demographic. Twitter is a microblog that lets users post up to 140 characters in a microblogging format called a tweet. It has more than 225 million members, with 340 million tweets being sent every day. LinkedIn, which is sort of a Facebook for professional contacts, has more than 150 million business prof professionals that use it. Pinterest is an online photo pin board and it lets people share their likes and retailers share their products. Again, it's used across a broad demographic. I know a lot of college students use it to plan weddings and people like my husband like to use it for those do-it-yourself projects. Pinterest has more than 10 million members and it drives more traffic to websites than any of the other social combined. Here's just another quick look at a graphical interface of some of these numbers of social media. It's just sort of mind-blowing it, and they grow so fast. If you're up on the latest technology and innovations in social media, you'll know that um, three that are becoming used a lot in the realm of communications and journalism and public relations and advertising, virtual reality, 360 degree video, as well as 3D video. These require um, special peripherals that you can use with your smartphone that get less expensive every day. The other thing that is really new that I use a lot in my job is Facebook Live and Periscope. From a journalist's point of view, I can capture events. And from a public relations standpoint, I can make um, do live videos of an event for people who can't be there, things like that. Live video has benefits for everyone in, in the media profession. Social media has changed journalism. Deadlines are now immediate. There's no more, I'm going to write my story tonight and I'm going to turn it in and it's going to come out in the paper tomorrow. You need to be able to write it, get your pictures taken, your videos shot and edited, and you need to get it posted and out on social media immediately. Breaking news and trending stories are online. Again, no more having to wait. Reporters now have to do it all. They have to write, they have to take pictures, they have to do the videos. And you'll find that most every magazine and newspaper that were formerly print only are now not only just online, but available as interactive applications and that you can access with your smartphone or your tablet. Social media serves multiple purposes for journalism, for both reporters and news consumers. Here are some other ways it benefits not only the field of journalism and news, but mass communications in general. 
Discover the hot topics. What are people talking about? You can track trends using tools such as Hootsuite or TweetDeck, which we'll talk about a little bit farther in this lecture. That'll help you capture social media by using a specific keyword or a hashtag, or by following certain users' accounts. Twitter and Facebook use what's called push technology that actually push trending issues to your social accounts or even to your email. Reporters and publicists can also use social channels to send breaking news or to promote an event or announcement using these tools as well as those such as Instagram, Pinterest, and Snapchat. Some sports reporters use social media to, to live tweet or live stream video with the game's commentary. Then they'll write a longer piece that'll be posted on, on a website after the game. Then they'll tease that out to social media. And then the next day, it'll come out in the day's print edition and they'll tease that through social media. More and more people turn to Twitter or Facebook for their breaking news. When the White House abruptly announced on May 1st, 2011, that President Obama was giving a late night address to the nation, CNN reporters spent the better part of an hour previewing the address without actually saying what it was about. CNN anchor Wolf Blitzer said, I have my own gut instincts on what it might be. He said that several times, adding that a senior White House official had thanked him for showing restraint and not speculating. But it wasn't CNN or other news channels or websites that the world was first informed that Osama bin Laden was dead. It was Twitter. Reports of Osama bin Laden's death circulated widely on social media for about 20 minutes before the anchors of the major broadcast and cable networks reported news of the raid at 10.45 p.m., about an hour before President Obama's address from the White House. However, at 10.25 p.m. Eastern Time, almost 20 minutes earlier, while President Obama was still working on his speech, Keith Urban, chief of staff for the former defense secretary, tweeted, So I'm told by a reputable person they've killed Osama bin Laden. Hot damn. His tweet was retweeted by several people, and anyone who was interested knew what the president was gonna, going to announce before he walked into the press room. People at the networks also received that tweet, but they did not want to report something this momentous based on one person's tweet, whose identity couldn't accurately be confirmed. It could have been a hoax by someone pretending to be Urban or by the person who tweeted him. It was just one example of how social media and traditional media deal with the same news in different ways and at different speeds. This wasn't the first time that news had been broken via social media. A tweet provided the first pictures of U.S. Airways Flight 1549 floating on the Hudson on January 15, 2009. Social media has also played an important role in getting news out about popular uprisings in Iran, Egypt, Libya, and elsewhere in the Arab world. These days when it's breaking news, the first place you're likely to find out about it is on Twitter or Facebook. There's dangers, of course. There have been more than a few examples of erroneous or out-of-date information being picked up by someone and sent essentially around the world before someone realized this was a problem. NPR reported that Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords had died in a shooting spree in Tucson but had to retract the report within minutes, but it continued floating around on Twitter for at least a half an hour. One of Professor Clannon's former students was working at the Star Advertiser newspaper in Hawaii on March 2011 when a magnitude 9.1 earthquake caused a massive and deadly tsunami that hit the coast of Japan. The reporter said this caused a lot of people to be concerned that a tsunami would also head for the islands. He was told to stay in contact with emergency personnel and to tweet everything he learned. He tweeted for the next 17 hours until everyone in Hawaii was sure there was no danger. More than just the island residents followed his tweets. News media around the country, including the New York Times, were citing him as a source for information about any risk to the Hawaiian islands. Facebook is another great journalist's tool. When a cheerleader died during a practice at her high school, 
Both print and broadcast reporters in the region scrambled to find out what they could find out about her. A Cal State Fullerton student who was interning at the Orange County Register at the time went to the young girl's Facebook page, offered her condolences, and asked if any of the victim's friends would be willing to talk to her. She scooped another seasoned journalist when she reported that the student had a history of heart problems that caused her untimely death at such a young age. Facebook users can also create pages, which allow individuals, organizations, or a product or service or concept the opportunity to have its own presence on that social network. These used to be called fan pages because they were originally meant to be used as sort of an online fan club. Today, they're used more to share news, images, and video, but mostly for engagement between users. Facebook pages can be a great way for media professionals to give their audiences, publics, and stakeholders value-added information in addition to what they get from reading updates in a newspaper or on a website. For journalists, a page offers unlimited space to talk about things that might not be in a news publication, but still would be of interest to those who follow the reporter's beat or have another vested interest in staying on top of the things that reporter covers. Public relations practitioners probably use social media more than journalists do. Their job is to help organizations communicate with their stakeholders. These organizations might be corporations, nonprofits, or just groups whose members have a common interest. It could be anything from surfing to knitting to Great Danes or whatever. Social media is a great tool for keeping these lines of communication open. You can use social media to monitor what people or groups are saying about you or saying about your client. PR people and journalists tweet or often live stream using one of the various tools to send live video such as Periscope or Facebook Live from press conferences and other staged events. An activist can use social media to bring attention to a specific cause or need. And social tools, as we've discussed already, are a useful tool to get the word out during a crisis. Ron Torosian, founder and CEO of New York City-based 5WPR, said, PR is a mix of journalism, psychology, and lawyering. It's an ever-changing and always interesting landscape. This multifaceted firm manages PR for a variety of businesses and organizations with issues such as branding, crisis communications, startups, etc. The firm's blog defines how social media has changed PR over the past decade. Mr. Tarosian goes on to say, social media has changed how people communicate as well as when they communicate, where they communicate, and even who they communicate with. And here's five ways specifically that he said that it's been cha that it has changed PR. Encouraged customer focus means social media has compelled many brands to start focusing more on their customers and building positive relationships. Customers can always go on Twitter and Facebook to sound off about bad customer experiences. This forces companies to resolve issues speedily to avoid a PR crisis. Companies also use interactions on social media to improve their business as a whole, especially where complaints and kudos are concerned. It's also created the 24-7 news cycle. The current all-day, everyday news cycle has both its ups and downs. On the upside, brands can deliver good news at any time and know someone is listening and ready to respond. Social media also provides the opportunity to give play-by-play -play updates as part of a crisis management plan when things go wrong. However, the 24-7 news cycle becomes a curse when bad news travels through the social media platforms and creates a PR crisis making it more difficult to recover from, clean up, and contain. Social makes PR more affordable for small businesses because in the past, PR firms and specialists had to work with politicians and large organizations, and they didn't have the funds to spend for brand management and crisis communications. Now they can hire college students or they can bring in interns to help develop, strategize, and maintain their social strategy, their social media strategy. 
it's led to integrated PR. You're, you hear often what's the difference between public relations and marketing, and in comes the play of integrated public relations. Marketing experts jumped on the social media bandwagon before PR experts and incorporated it into a good PR strategy. And as a result, to work with social media marketing, public relations expert must integrate marketing concepts and practices with PR strategy to achieve results. Lastly, greater engagement. In the past, communication was a one-way street where companies put out content and customers had no public avenue to easily interact with or to respond to distributed content. Now, for better or worse, customers engage with brands and their content by leaving comments, sharing, and liking. This also helps brands know how effective content and ads are in reaching the masses and boosting visibility, as opposed to the past where the effective commercials and newspaper ads could only be measured in sales. Social media continues to have a strong impact on public relations, and it will continue to influence this ever-changing field. Social tools are also useful to get the word out during a crisis or when a brand is in crisis. Businesses, organizations, and even individuals use social media to find out what people are saying about and to some respond to what's being said. Kraft Foods launched a Rainbow Oreo campaign in the summer of 2012. This campaign was to show support for Gay Pride Month. Some were appalled and took it as a slap in the face to the LGBT community, yet Kraft used its Facebook page and Twitter to immediately respond to both the positive and negative feedback, a fine example of online engagement to avert a crisis. Or, social media can create a bigger mess such as in the case of United Airlines in early April 2017. United CEO Oscar Buñoz was raked over the coals for his response via Twitter to a passenger dragged off one of its flights. Public relations experts say the CEO should have quickly offered an unreserved apology after a customer was forcibly removed from his seat and dragged down an overbooked aircraft's aisle. Instead, Muñoz apologized only for, quote, having to reaccommodate customers, unquote. Many found his response to be overly callous and said so on social media, where a video of the incident went viral. But Munoz doubled down in a letter sent to United employees af the next afternoon describing the passenger as, quote, disruptive and belligerent, unquote. He said that the employees followed established procedures for dealing with situations like this. To find out what's trending and what's popular on social, there's all kinds of tools and applications and new ones emerge every day. For those working in public relations, I recommend Muckrack because it's a great resource for finding journalists for parameters such as a specific beat or location or a topic they cover or just for things they've shared or tweeted about online. It has tons of options for searching, including media outlets where you can search for magazine editors, bloggers, and digital-only publications. The buzzword that we're all hearing these days is fake news. The question is, what is fake news? The thing that you need to be most concerned with is credibility counts. Remember veracity. Remember that you want to make sure your sources are credible. I think Henry Gendro said this best in, when he wrote a column in Wired Magazine, and I'm not going to read it because it's here on your screen, but I think he sums it up very well. Always check and double check your sources because your credibility is your reputation and don't ruin it because you didn't take the time to verify something that you saw on social media. And last, I'm going to list three of my favorite tools that I use all the time in both my professional career as well as in my teaching. Snapchat, I love it for its storytelling capabilities. Instagram, again, I can use it to tell a story. I can use it to, I can overlay hashtags with an image for things like Monday motivation, just as a tool to engage my clients. And Pinterest, I already stated my favorite thing is, I love to watch for do-it-yourself and craft projects. We don't know what's going to emerge next. Social media channels change all the time. With that said, I hope this has given you some insights on how you can use social media in your work and in your professional life and as a student in the field of communications. But keep in mind, 
Twitter, Facebook, and other social media are just a means to an end. It's not the end itself. You still need to decide what's newsworthy and craft your story. Social media, like the ability to do one-on-one -on -one interviews and internet research, is just one of the items in your toolbox. And whether you're using social media or other sites, always be careful to determine the credibility of your sources. If you're the one writing for social media, every social post you publish reflects on your brand. If you're sloppy, your company will look sloppy too. Even worse, it could undermine your success on social media. That's why it's important to write well on social media. Copywriting requires some unique skills when you're writing for social because you need to be able to cram as much value into as few words as possible. But you also have to be consistent and engaging at all times. Plus, every network is unique. What works on Facebook might flop on LinkedIn. So take the time to be a social media guru, whether you're monitoring it or you're writing it.